this, um, this month we were going to talk about, well, what I put down was making friends with the unknown. And actually, when I was considering this, I felt that it's not really making friends with the unknown because it's unknown, right? So we can't really make friends with something that we have no concept around or no ability to really identify. Actually, what I've been feeling, and especially with all these planets now retrograding, um, it's more about letting go of the known. And I think that for many of us, we're really struggling with, okay, we, there's, a certain, there's a certain way things have been. And even if they haven't been working, this is the thing that has, has struck me anyway, is I notice that I'm kind of clinging on to things or I'm worried about losing things that weren't actually working for me anyway. If I really am honest with myself, it was kind of like, yeah, but I didn't really like doing that or I didn't really, this wasn't really fulfilling me and yet I'm hanging on to it because there's this feeling of, well, at least I know it and I know what to expect and I know how it works. And I think that the whole planet is kind of doing that at, at different, different levels and different intents. There's, there's this feeling of, well, better the devil you know than the one you don't. So there is this danger of falling back into old habits and falling back into old patterns that actually were not necessarily um, serving you very well in the first place. Whereas actually the energy as it comes in, it's a bit like Shin, you're saying when you're, when you're really in a deep meditative place at the moment, the energy is phenomenal. And I don't know if you guys have noticed it, but for me, it was like since the full moon. So last Thursday, when I'm sitting quietly, it's like my whole body is actually moving. It's vibrating. It's like all kinds of weird things happening. And so I've noticed that my meditations have got more intense, my Reiki sending, my healing, all this stuff has, has really ramped up. And some people might not be feeling it quite the same. Uh, some of you might be totally resonating with what I'm saying. And it's almost like there's this movement now. Some countries are already opening up. Like my, my brother lives, in, uh, lives in, in Vietnam and the schools are opening. So they're all back at school and they're all like Mother's Day. They were posting pictures of them having dinner in a restaurant and it's business as usual, right? Here in the UK, we just heard yesterday that we're, we're in it for another couple of months. Things are going to start opening at a much more uh, slower rate, but then we were one of the slowest to close down in the first place. And I'm sure that all around the world, it's almost like we're starting to see the light at the end. Of, there is a light at the end of the tunnel and there's, there's beginning to put in place the, a kind of unfolding process of how it's going to unfold. And there's also a temptation of rushing back into business as usual. And I think that the part of the, the, the focus or the, or the impetus of this session is for us to really acknowledge the parts of the known that we came into COVID with, what was working and what truly wasn't really working or what, if, if given the clean slate, we could actually do something different. So the, the idea of making friends with the unknown is, is more about making, making room, making room for the, like an openness or an expansion or um, an invitation for the, the new to come in, whatever that new is, and a willingness to let go of what was there before. And that can sometimes feel quite daunting. Um, but if you are really tuning in with the energy and you're noticing how much energy, um, it feels possible. Like for me, when I'm in that, that kind of deep state of, of meditation or my Reiki practice, I just, I'm getting these like almost these little thoughts, these cheeky little thoughts. They're very cheeky and they're just kind of coming in and they're like, oh, what if? Like, what, what if you could do this? Or what about thinking about it like this or thinking about it like that? 
So there's certain old paradigms that I've been holding unconscious, literally unconsciously. This is my role. This is my job. This is someone else's role. This is someone else's job. This is what they're supposed to do. That's what they're supposed to do. And what I've noticed an acceleration of is the questioning. Well, is it really their job? Is it really my job? Is it really that person's job? Like maybe the, the so-called job could be um, reinvented, could be dismissed, could be changed. Um, and so I'm wondering if it really today it's more about opening to the unknown um, and doing that through our willingness to let go of all our baggage. And by baggage, I really mean not only our stories. Um, the other thing that's been coming to me, I don't know if this resonates with you guys, is old stories I just can't be bothered with anymore. It's like I'll have that old story come in, and this and that and the other and the other, and I'll just be like, oh, shut up. Just shut up. I, I'm just not interested. Um, so there seems to be just a general... Um, just in my system. I don't know if there's any thumbs up with that one. Yeah, Mikey, thank you. <laughs> just a general, um, like the, the other thing that hit me the other day was social media. And I was on social media and then it's all this like, and this is happening and that's happening and this conspiracy theory and this thing and this, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm so bored with this. And I just turned it off and I just thought, I don't, I don't care. I actually don't care. <laughs> and things like that open you up to a more powerful openness for, I said open twice in that sentence, ignore that, a more powerful rising of something else. And that is the true stepping into to our power, stepping into the power of not worrying about what the stories are, not worrying what other people's stories are, not worrying about what everybody thinks about this and that and it's like all that thinking has just become so um sedentary you know the word it's like plodding blah, blah, blah. and the energy that's coming in is so much more exciting than that and i feel so much more capable of expansion and that expansion is really kind of stepping into what is my job and, and actually, I spoke about this, um, God, I can't remember, I've been ranting a lot on, in one of my videos, I think, in terms of coming into what, what really is our job here. And for some of us, it is ranting on Facebook. You know, I totally accept that for some people, that is a very valid job for them, and it gives them a lot of energy. But then for other people, like for myself, when I'm reading it, I just feel tired, actually. I'm just, I'm just reading some of this rhetoric, and I'm just like, God, I'm so bored. So that clearly isn't my alignment. And so it's, it's giving yourself permission to come into your proper alignment. What is it that is, is really empowering you and is easy and natural? So one of the things that I've noticed is I'm joining a lot of meditation. So I'm running meditations, but I'm also joining meditations. And it feels I could do this all day. Literally, I could just join one meditation and run one and just spend the whole day in meditation. And it feels really congruent with my own personal alignment. And then I know for other people that that just sounds like torture just to sit and meditate the whole day long. And that's because that's not in your alignment. And so the next couple of months, and if the planets are anything to go on, this carries on until September, end of September. This is a really powerful, uh, like Saturn is, is all about coming into your true life purpose. And your true life purpose has nothing to do with your career. Like you could be very successful in your career. That, that might well be part of it. But for many of us, um, the career is just irrelevant. It's just a way of learning a living. But what is the, the, higher purpose of that like it might well be you're in your career in order to make a difference to your team in order to make a difference with the people you work with or it may be simply to fund something else 
I mean, we don't know, right? So the life purpose is, is what is it that life is calling out of us? And this is the next couple of months is really critical for us to, to land that. And it's not about what everyone else is doing. And I think this is really important to, to come into that personal power of what is it I'm supposed to be doing, not what is it that everyone else around me thinks I should be doing or thinks should be done or blah, blah, blah. Because wherever you look, depending on your communities, there's so much opinion at the moment about what should and shouldn't and blah, 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 blah. I mean, it was like before Boris Johnson made his actual announcement, there was two days of commentary about what he was going to say. I mean, it was just such a ridiculous waste of time. <laughs> like, why are we spending so much mental energy on trying to guess what's going to happen next? So much mental energy when actually, if we just open, if we spend our time opening to what is coming in right now, one, it's awesome. I mean, unbelievably awesome, the, um, the intensity of the energy coming in. So why not enjoy that? And two, the unknown by definition is unknown, right? We don't know. So we could sit and guess and, and, and try and talk about it all we want. But I think we'd be much better prepared if we enjoyed the energy coming in, if we did what was right in front of us, and if we really paid attention to the alignment, what feels easy, what feels right at this moment. And if you notice that your energy is leaking, uh, Debbie and I were talking about this earlier, it's kind of like, let's just imagine you've got 10 pieces, 10 units of energy, and where are you putting it? It's very precious. So be mindful. Where are you putting your energy at the moment? Where is your attention? Because wherever your attention is, that's where the thoughts and the actions and, and the energy flows. So wherever the attention is, it's really important. So bringing in this intense energy and then not wasting it. Because if you waste it, you just scatter it everywhere. And it's just not as powerful, is it? I mean, you can if you want, but why not actually use it to do some, some really lasting forward momentum that's going to carry us into 2021 it was a bit sad talking in may about 2021 but it feels like it's going to be that long right before things start to really come into its full manifestation so now we've been given this real gift of time to i think it was bruce lipton talking about the butterfly in the cocoon this is like a big cocooning a chrysalis and so we're kind of still in the caterpillar mode and we're starting to feel into the butterfly mode. And it's like we're in this soup. Because you know, in the chrysalis, that's what happens, right? The caterpillar literally dissolves into a soup and then completely re-engineers itself into a butterfly. I mean, it's kind of disgusting and, and kind of awesome all at the same time. And that's what we're doing at this moment. We're just going to start settling in. So we're going to start off with the group attunement. So just bringing your hands into gasha, bringing your hands into prayer pose, just taking a couple of deep breaths. And for anybody who is joining in, in the attunement, we're just going to start now. For those of you who are sending, we're just going to start tuning into everybody in this group. And the intention is to just send healing and Reiki to everybody in this group and for anybody listening afterwards.
And now we're just going to settle into this energy that we've created for each other. Just taking a few breaths to connect in. At the moment, I have my hands on my heart center and on my solar plexus. But that doesn't mean that that's the correct posture. You're just going to find somewhere on your body to place your hands that feels comfortable. We're just going to tune into the hands for a few moments. Just noticing any sensations. Then we're going to bring our attention to the breath without changing it in any way. We're just observing the breath just to help our mind settle down and to bring our awareness deeper into the body. And as you keep your focus deep into the center of the body, into the chest, into the belly, if you're breathing deep into the belly, just also become aware of the overall sensation of the energy. And I'm just pointing this out because actually it can, it's very easy when the energies are very intense to mistake it for anxiety or even fear. Because the vibration feels very quick, almost like you're out of breath. But if you can just relax into that intensity, And with a quiet mind, just observe. Keeping the breath nice and even. Just relaxing, even when it feels quite intense. And for some of you, you may not feel any intensity at all. It might just feel very calm and peaceful. So just whatever is there for you, you're accepting it 100%. And if your mind is still busy or it keeps pulling you away in its little dramas, just trying to detach the mind in its little stories. There's lots of little dramas going on at the moment. But what we're interested in is actually not the story, but the deeper truth of the energy itself the opportunity it is opening up for us. So in this moment, we're just going to stop the stories. Just let them drop. So just see where the energy is coming in from. That may seem an interesting question, but is it coming in from the crown and down? 
or is it coming in from the base and up? Or perhaps it's actually emanating from the heart and out? Or a combination? Staying focused on the actual sensations themselves, not identifying them with any particular thought or feeling or emotion. So by that, I would mean maybe a vibration or pulsing, maybe a heat or a tingling. With no thought or emotion attached. may feel a little bit contracted or expansive. You may feel a little bit of tension or openness. And just trusting that the flow is exactly as it should be. Whatever the feeling, it is perfect for you. Now just dropping in the question. Are you okay in this space? Does it feel okay, comfortable, manageable? And if you're deep in the body, feeling all these sensations, probably feels perfectly natural and fine. In fact, you might even feel that you could sense a little bit more if more wants to come in and you can just keep an openness to whatever wants to flow through you. It's like energetically opening your arms. And if some of you have been feeling wings, this might sound a bit odd, but sometimes deep in your shoulder blades, you might have noticed a bit of tension. And so you can also play with unfurling your wings, like great big angel wings and just giving them a flap. A few people have been noticing that recently. It's just the opposite of open arms. It's just a different way of opening. or if it's sprouting somewhere else, just allowing whatever the imagery is for you to come to your mind and just energetically opening however that is.
And if there's any tension or compression or fear or anxiety, that's also perfectly fine. Doesn't make any difference. Staying with the breath and the sensations and the flow. In a sense, this is the unknown. And just notice how familiar and comfortable it is. Because in reality, we're always operating from the unknown. The unknown is actually our source, our home. It's where all of our manifestations and thoughts actually arise from. And the more we follow those thoughts, the more we follow the little beliefs and the distractions the further from home we go. So now we're just bringing it all back in so that we can operate from this space deep inside our bodies. Just connecting in, it's like you're immersing yourself. So you might feel like you're immersing from an air perspective. It will feel very cosmic and light and open. Or you might be immersing yourself like a bath, just slipping in so comfortable and warm. Or if you're more grounded and earthly, it might feel like you're rooted, steady, anchored. Or a combination of any of those. And if you notice your mind is wandering, you're just very gently bringing it back to the breath, to the hands, to the sensation of the energy in your body. Even if the energy feels very intense or even shaky or perhaps overwhelming, just also noticing that part that is perfectly calm, peaceful, aware and awake. This awareness is in fact the unknown. And 
and it is perfectly fine. Content, calm. The feeling that all is well. might also consider that it is exactly the same as your Reiki. Bring our attention to the breath. Just taking a few deliberate breaths now. The deep yogic breath from the belly up all the way up into the chest, up into the shoulders and back down again in a wave from the shoulders, the chest, the belly. A few breaths like this, like the rhythmic wave all the way up and all the way down. And as you're doing this, you're going to start bringing your attention to your own natural body boundaries. First of all, start noticing your aura. Just noticing the edges of that couple of feet out from you and then bringing that awareness to the skin starting at the top of your head can you feel the scalp the face the nose you can always scrunch up your face if that's easier the back of the head becoming aware of the shoulders the arms chest, the back, and running your attention all the way down into the pelvis, the thighs, knees, calves, ankles, and finally the feet. Pausing at the feet, just make sure, giving them a little wiggle. And very gently, whenever you're ready, also releasing your hands, putting them above your head, giving them a stretch and a little wiggle all the way down your spine. And whenever you're ready, opening your eyes and coming back to us. So how is everybody? How are we all doing? How was that? Any comments, experiences to share? It was very grounding for me. Calming and grounding. It was lovely. Good. Yeah, really good. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome.
what about for everyone else hot jessica you're hot <laughs> Do you, do you feel the energy? Do you feel the intensity of the energy at the moment? Or does it feel kind of the same for you guys? Yeah, no, that was that was really quite strong. Mm. Um, I went really deep and then it almost like my head wasn't on my body. Like <laughs> so yeah, I kind of like did that almost like a little nod to check that it was still there. <laughs> But yeah, that was really good. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes it's um, it's important to check in to the energy because when it's really intense like that, it can actually feel like it's anxiety, right? Or fear or something. We, we misinterpret it sometimes um, because it's just so uh, kind of overwhelming sometimes for the system as well when it's first starting to come in like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very intense. Thanks, Pete. Really deep, yeah. So the, the thing is, is that um, these intensities are gonna keep kind of hitting us this week. I think it's, it really is gonna be a very intense week as all the planets start to retrograde. So it's just to bear this in mind because you're going to be, if you're isolated with family and with other people or even online as you're talking to them and interacting with them, if not, not everybody is aware of this, like we're very lucky in our groups in a sense because we have Reiki and we're, we're aware of energies and we can manage them, but the people around us might not be in the same situation. So people are starting to go off everywhere just be mindful of the fact that when the intense energies come in, if people are not particularly aware of themselves and of the energies, because these energies are kind of new in a sense, right? Then as they, as they come in, um, people could overreact or they could label it. So people, will very quickly label it as, oh, I'm feeling tense, or I'm feeling anxious, or I'm feeling scared, or I'm feeling, and they, you know, it's like the energy comes in and they automatically want to stick a label on it. Um, so it's also for you to be aware that you're not doing that. So this whole idea with the openness is just to stay connected with that inner peace. And that's partly what the Reiki gives us. And it's also partly what just our awareness of the body like as soon as you start focusing in on the body and the breath and the hands everything calms down right everything kind of settles in and you just kind of feel okay this is this is fine this is familiar once you come in it's familiar ground because you're home like this is this is where the home is right in our body in our system and um I think when we scatter ourselves out there with all of this stuff, other stuff that's going on, it's very, it's very easy to lose ourselves. And at the moment, it's really important we don't do that. I mean, it's always important we don't do that, but it's kind of the opportunity is here now for us not to do that so that we can come in and start to build, let go of all these stories, let go of all this past crap that we've been carrying for so many decades and actually move forward with a much lighter collection. I think. Any other feedback? Got a couple of minutes before we call off. What what else has been going on with you guys? Or any questions? No. Nothing. Talking into the abyss. Uh, well, no, I just wanted, I spoke to my auntie in the UK today, um, and I don't know, it just seemed like a lot of people were really angry at what had happened with, you know, the Boris, because it's still not very clear in terms of guidelines and everything. So my general, yeah, like feeling that yeah. I got from people in the UK was just like this, you know, like anger that they just want clarity from the leadership. And, you know, I'm in my Bali bubble here, but I'm just wondering if that's the same for other people around that is this, you know, like frustration and anger. My feeling sitting here is that I think the UK 
I mean, the US is a close second, but I think the UK is going to go down in history as having bungled this the worst. <laughs> Honestly, it is another bre another Brexit then. Oh my God! It's just I'm sitting here watching it like these guys are lunatics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i'm not i i don't I, I don't think it's global i mean i think anybody who's in the uk probably is feeling it um probably worse like when i talk to my the rest of my family no one else is in the uk just me and the rest of the family is just, just, they're fine. i mean vietnam's back my parents are out of penang penang's also out singapore's yeah. doing pretty well right i mean it's got everything under control I think most other countries have have this like they can they can see the light. Yeah, Australia. Well, Sydney's loosening a lot of its yeah. restrictions now. Yeah. So I think when we look at it from a global perspective, um, I think the light at the end of the tunnel is very clear now for most for most people. I mean, I think sitting here in the UK, I, I understand the anger that like I, I that feels like very. Um, there's a lot of frustration um, just because it, it's just been so badly managed yeah. and um, no one knows what's happening. That's, that's the biggest concern, I think. But then this is also the practice of, un, of the unknown, right? Like if you, when, you, when I'm sitting doing my practice, I got no issue. As soon as I turn on the news, then I've got an issue. So what I've been doing personally is turning off all that stuff because a bit like you in your Bali bubble, like when I'm in my little bubble, what's the problem? <laughs> yeah, there's, no, there's no problem really. There's still food. Now, now there's toilet paper and pasta. It's like, yay. <laughs> I go to the supermarket. I can buy whatever I want. You know, there, there isn't actually a problem. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying that in any way in terms of obviously, seriously, Obviously, lots of people have problems in terms of the illness itself, but me and my bubble, um, you know, we're just doing the best we can and helping out the best we can. And I think that's all we can do at this yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. So Becky's saying Germany, things are going back to normal. Shanghai optimism. I know, you know, you guys in China, it's funny, isn't it? It's just kind of like you guys are, are well out of it. And it's, but it's, it's also the, um, the level of resistance. I mean, there's a lot of resistance here in the UK as well um, around staying at home and around being told what to do and about all this kind of thing. And if there's that much resistance in the system, it's going to cause a lot of tension. And that's not to say we all just blindly follow what, what everybody's being told, but um, I think all of us have a personal responsibility to check in on our own level of resistance and where it's coming from and whether it's helpful. Um, and all these, you know, that's, that's really what personal work's about is coming into your own alignment with what it is you need to do. So I think that's really important. And, and my feeling is that many of us are being called to do that. Well, everybody's been called to do that, but a lot of people are resisting it enormously. <laughs> but anyway, we'll see. So any final thoughts and things? Any final bits and pieces? I will post the um, this recording on Facebook once I've cleaned it up a little bit. And so you can go back and do the meditation if it's helpful. Um, the Friday meditations we're still doing. So every Friday, it's a bit shorter than this. I don't blah, blah, blah quite so much because there's no topic. So we just kind of dive straight in and, and do the healing. So that's, that's kind of pretty cool and fun as well. If you want to join us every Friday, that's an hour later. So we do it at 2 p.m. UK time, um, 9 p.m. Singapore time. And then the next, I've just put on the June, the June Reju, um, the topic, which I've completely forgotten now what it is, something cool, <laughs> cool topic. I didn't need to do it this morning. My brain has gone as well. My memory's just gone to pieces. So anyway, all right, everybody, do you mind if I unmute you all so we can all say bye-bye? I like that little bye-bye moment. <laughs>
Bye bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Have a lovely month. Bye. And take Thank care you. of yourself. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.